In the previous video, you've seen how we can convert a linear programming model into a standard form. Now, before going into the simplex algorithm itself, I need to introduce two additional terms for you. They are called basic solution and basic feasible solution. Let's take a look at what they mean. So we have a standard form LP, which may be written like this. So in the objective function, we have C1 times X1, C2 times X2, up to Cn times Xn. So we have N variables. And then we have the constraints, and then you see that all constraints, they have equality signs. Okay, and then you have uh, the right-hand side, B1, B2, up to Bm. So we know that we have M constraints. Sometimes this is written in the form of um, matrices. So uh, it may be written as A times X equals B. So A is uh, a matrix of all the coefficients. So you just uh, collect all the coefficients and put them into a matrix. So the matrix is M by N, M constraints, N variables. And then X is a column vector. You just collect all your X variables in a column vector. And then B is also a column vector. You just collect all the uh, values in the right-hand side to the vector B, such that now you may uh, rewritten this uh, linear programming model in a matrix form of AX equals B. Let's talk about basic solution. If we have a problem with N variables and M constraints, in which N is greater than or equals to M, if N is greater than M, we cannot solve this problem. Because imagine you have a lot of variables, X1, X2, X3, up to let's say X99, but you only have two constraints. Example. So you have 99 variables, but you only have two constraints. You cannot solve this, right? Because you have so many variables, but you only have two constraints. You cannot solve this problem. So the idea to obtain a solution, which is called the basic solution, is that we set n minus m variables equals zero. So if you have 99 variables, but you only have two constraints, so this says that you set 99 minus 2, which means 97 variables, you just set them equals 0. You don't need to compute them, you don't need to consider them anything, just ignore them and set the values of those variables equals 0. So now you only have two variables left, and then you solve the problem using the remaining m variables. Right? You have 99 variables you set 97 of them equals zero, so you only have two remaining variables. So two variables, two constraints, you can solve that problem. So that's how we can obtain basic solution. So the variables that we set as zero, we call them non-basic variable. For the remaining m variables that we really compute, try to find a value, we call them basic variable. So don't be confused between basic solution and basic variable. Basic solution means that um, the set of solution of both the non-basic and basic variables. So let's see an example. Here we have three variables and two constraints. So clearly we cannot solve this problem. But we can obtain the basic solution. So if you want to obtain a basic solution, how many variables should be non-basic and how many variables should be basic? Well, if we follow this procedure, means that we need to set n minus m. So three variables minus two constraints means we have to set one variable as the non-basic and solve uh, the remaining two basic variables, which means that we have three possibilities of basic solutions, right? Because we can set x1 as 0, we can set x2 as 0, we can set x3 as 0. So for each of this option, we will have one basic solution. 
So from the first option, we have one basic solution. We have the second basic solution from the second uh, setting. And then from the third setting, we obtain the third basic solution. So this is how we can have basic solutions. Um, sometimes though, basic solution may not exist for particular selection of M basic variables. So let's say we have this um, two equations and then we have three variables here if we set x3 as the non-basic which means that we um, set x3 equals zero so you can just ignore them and then if we try to solve the remaining two variables x1 plus x2 equals 1 2x1 plus 4x2 equals 3 we will not get any solution out of this. So this means that uh, sometimes for a particular set of basic and non-basic variables, you do not have a basic solution. From the basic solutions that we have obtained, we can go further to define whether those solutions are basic feasible solution or not. A basic solution is called basic feasible solution if all variables have non-negative values. So for example, here again, we have uh, two variables, sorry, three variables and two constraints. We can obtain the basic solution by setting one of those variables to become non-basic. So let's say if we set X3 as the non-basic, we, uh, we set X3 equals zero now we have the remaining variables are x1 and x2 and then using these two equations we can solve um, this problem to obtain x1 equals 2 x2 equals 1 x3 is 0 because from the beginning we set x3 to become non-basic and then you may obtain basic solutions by setting x1 as non-basic here and then x2 as non-basic. So here we have three basic solutions. Let's take a look at them one by one. For the first one, this is a BFS, basic feasible solution, because the values of all variables are non-negative. The second one, though, is not a basic feasible solution, because you see x3 equals negative 1. This is not allowed uh, to be called as a basic feasible solution. So number two is a basic solution, but it is not basic feasible solution. Number three is a basic feasible solution because all values, they're all non-negative. So the only basic solution that is not BFS is the second one. Again, because it has a negative value in one of the variables. Apparently, basic feasible solution is related to the concept of extreme point. So the theorem says that a point in the feasible region of a linear programming is an extreme point if and only if it is a basic feasible solution to the LP. So if we look at a uh, graphical representation of a feasible region of a problem, you see that um, the points B, C, E, F, they're all extreme points. And according to this theorem, they all correspond to basic feasible solutions. To illustrate the theorem, let's look at the ladder limited example. In that example, we have four variables and two constraints. We have four variables because we have converted the original linear programming model into a standard form. So the variables are x1, x2, also s1 and s2. So the select variables are also counted as variables. So that's why we have four variables and two constraints. To obtain the basic solutions, we set four minus two variables equals zero, or non-basic variables. And then we solve the problem using the remaining two variables. So here the table shows that 
all the possibilities of uh, the variables that we choose as the non-basic variables. So each of this row means that we pick two out of four variables to become non-basic variables and then solve the remaining uh, variables as the basic variables. So we have six basic solutions here. If we look at the graph in the right hand side here, you see that the first one uh, corresponds to point E. And then the second basic solution corresponds to point C. And then the third one corresponds to point A. The fourth one is point D because X1, 0, X2, 60. And then the fifth is uh, corresponding to point B. And then finally, uh, the last basic solution corresponds to point F, X1, X2 equals 0. So the graph only draws uh, the variables x1, x2. It doesn't draw the s1 and s2. So from here, you see that um, the points A and D, so let me highlight them. The point A and D, they are not in the feasible region. The feasible region is this shaded area. Because uh, they are not in the feasible region, you can also see that they are not basic feasible solution, right? It has a negative value here, it has a negative value here. So this shows the, um, um, this shows the illustration of the previous theorem, which means that, uh, which says that the extreme point in a linear programming corresponds to basic feasible solutions. So B, E, C, F, there are all extreme points such that there are also basic feasible solution. A and D, they are not basic feasible solutions, so they are not extreme points as well. So you may wonder why we need to care about basic feasible solution. Well, if an LP has an optimal solution, then it has a BFS that is optimal, which means that we do not need to um, check all the points in the feasible region. There are infinite number of points. We can only check the BFS to find out the optimal solution. Because here it says that if an LP has an optimal solution, then it has a BFS that is also optimal. So in a graphical solution, you know that we can only check the extreme points to see which one is the optimal solution. However, uh, because we have more than two variables, we need to use the BFS concept because uh, we cannot really see or visualize which point is the extreme points, right? So that is what the simplex algorithm is going to do. We will check the BFS and then find the optimal one among all the basic feasible solutions that we have. So that's what we're going to talk about in the simplex algorithm. Okay, to check your understanding, here are four statements. Which one of the following statement is true? I will give you the time to think with the pause on the video, and then I will give you the answer after the pause. Okay, A is wrong because non-basic variable always has the value of zero, so it cannot be negative. So A is wrong. C is wrong because um, BFS must be a basic solution because BFS is a subset of basic solution. So C is wrong. And then D is wrong because uh, BFS have M basic variables. So uh, it has n minus m non-basic, but it has m basic variables. So the correct one is B. A basic solution may not be a BFS because if a basic solution has one or more variables with negative value, then it is not a BFS. An LP problem can have many basic solutions. It depends on the variables that we choose to become non-basic variables. Is this statement true or false? D 
the answer is yes, it's true. Because if you look at this example that we've seen before, you see that uh, we have six basic solutions here. And it depends on which variables we choose to become non-basic variables. Or in other words, you can also say it depends on which variables that we choose as the basic variables. Okay, so that's the end of this video. And then next we're going to talk about adjacent basic feasible solution. So up to here, you should be able to obtain basic solutions from a problem. And then you should be able to tell which one is a BFS and then which one is not. So see you in the next video. Thank you.